Aliath, Dube, Vector and Alcade. Now you likely have never heard of these relatively obscure stars, perhaps one of them at best. The thing is though, they are some of the brightest stars in perhaps the most recognisable constellation of all. Individually, they fly under the radar, but together they make quite a celestial stir. Hi everyone, Baker here, and in today's video we return to our constellation series to take a look at Ursa Major, the Bear constellation, one of the most famous of all in our night skies. So, let's get to it. It's usual that bears evoke a sense of awe and admiration in us due to their sheer power, majestic presence, but also high significance in various cultures around the world. While Ursa Major includes many stars forming the bear, the Big Dipper is often confused with the constellation itself, but it's actually a distinct subset and widely recognised asterism. Bears, of course, have a distinctive appearance characterised by a strong build and a powerful stature, and in many ways the same could be said of Dube, Alpha Ursae Majoris. Dube is relatively bright with an apparent magnitude about plus 1.79, but it's actually only the second brightest in the constellation, and is actually a binary system, a K-type giant that evolved away from the main sequence, and a smaller companion star Dube B, a main sequence F-class star similar to Procyon. The principal star is 280 million years old, with 3.4 times the mass, and has expanded to 17 times the radius of the Sun. Positioned in the upper left of the Big Dipper's bowl, Dube is located approximately 120 light years away from Earth, and is the 34th brightest star in the sky. The gracefully positioned star of Alcade is sometimes known as the jewel of the bear's tail. Alcade, third brightest star in Ursa Major, is a typical B type blue white main sequence star with a classification of B35. Eta Ursae Majoris is the 40th brightest star in our night sky. Unlike most stars of the Big Dipper though, it is not a member of the Ursa Major moving group and will slowly dissipate from the asterism over the coming millennia. Alcade's other claim to fame so far is that it once had a United States Navy class cargo ship named after it, the USS Alcade. Interestingly, it survived World War II only to be decommissioned in 1946. The M81 galaxy is situated in the north of the constellation. Because of relative proximity to the Milky Way galaxy, large size and an active galactic nucleus, which interestingly harbours a 70 million solar mass supermassive black hole. Messier 81, as it's also known, is almost entirely face on to our vantage point, and so has been studied extensively by professional astronomers. It has a spatial diameter of about 96,000 light years and so it's marginally smaller than the Milky Way. It also shares the sky with M82, another galaxy deemed the Cigar Galaxy. M82 is also a member of the aforementioned M81 group, so although not part of our local cluster of galaxies, it still remains close by at roughly 12 million light years distance and comfortably remains within the Virgo supercluster, in other words, our local supercluster. The Ursa Major constellation is visible from different parts of the planet, depending on the time of year and the observer's latitude. But it's primarily a northern polar constellation, and unsurprisingly it's easily seen from locations in the northern hemisphere. The closer you are to the equator, the higher the bear appears in the sky. For observers in the southern hemisphere, Ursa Major is a challenging constellation to see, because it hugs the northern horizon, and it can often be obscured by the horizon or buildings. In some southern latitudes beyond minus 20 degrees south, like southern Australia or Argentina, to the southern tip of South America, it may not even be visible at all. Let me know in the comments below if you can see it where you are located in the world. We focused on the subgiant star of Alioth, or Epsilon Ursae Majoris, in our recent video Mir Placidus and Alioth, so don't forget to check that one out for more detailed information about this wondrous star. In short, Alioth is a large, subgiant white coloured star with the designation of A13, and the star boasts a magnitude of plus 1.77 and is the 33rd brightest star in the sky. Despite its epsilon designation, it's actually the brightest star in Ursa Major. Positioned in the bear's tail, Alioth is about 81 light years from the Sun and has a mass of 2.91 suns with a luminosity of 102. In ancient mythology and folklore, Ursa Major, interesting, it was a great bear placed in the sky by Zeus, the king of the gods, to honour the bear that had once helped him in a great battle. Approximately 217 light years away, in the area of Ursa Major, but without as yet a designation, HD 80606 and HD 80607 
are two stars comprising a binary star system that orbit each other at an average distance of 1,200 astronomical units. I mention this system as both stars are Sun analogues, albeit both slightly smaller. You may have seen our video on Zeta Reticuli, the double Sun system, and in many ways this system is very similar. Two suns in a very distant orbit means in theory double the chances of planets in the habitable zone of sun-like stars and all within the same system. That said, as yet, the only planetary body found is HD 80606b, which bizarrely boasts the most eccentric orbit amongst known exoplanets, with a misalignment of 53 degrees to its star's rotation. This causes close stellar encounters and must leave the planet with extremely unusual space weather and aurorae. Its eccentricity for reference is akin to Halley's Comet. Though the world itself may be a gas giant, it could still harbour some interesting moons that would pass in and out of the habitable zone at regular intervals, and whether this could be conductive to life is unknown at this point. Fecta, or the bear's eye, designated as Gamma Ursae Majoris, is another radiant white star and the 86th brightest star in the sky, with an apparent magnitude of plus 2.41. Vector is actually a very complicated binary system, and interestingly, is separated by just 11 light years from Beta Ursae Majoris or Merak. Vector lies around 83 light years from the Sun, and Merak, which is an A class main sequence star, not too dissimilar from the star of Vega, lies some 79.7 light years away, as you see in this diagram. Merak, interestingly, is ever so slightly brighter than Vector at plus 2.37 apparent magnitudes, which makes it the 80th brightest star in our skies. Perhaps have a look at the two the next time you get a chance. It's interesting to see two very similar stars in the sky next to each other, relatively speaking. The Ursa Major constellation is one of the most recognisable constellations in our night skies. Highlighted by the Big Dipper asterism, it contains several of the top 100 brightest stars in the night sky. Alpha Ursae Majoris, or Dube, is a bright orange star that forms a binary system with a B-class main sequence star, but is not the brightest star in the constellation, and that title falls to the magnificent white star of Aliath. In the distance, the constellation hides several galaxies, amongst them the strangely named M82 Cigar Galaxy, as well as an intriguing double sun system with a bizarrely orbiting, potentially Game of Thrones style exoplanet. Just like a bear, Ursa Major has a huge presence in our skies, Let's take a moment to marvel at this highly recognisable and indeed most famous of the constellations. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. And if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below. And perhaps next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well. And I'll see you on the next one.